Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on kinematics. The topic of this video is velocity time graphs for constant velocity motion. Here are the questions we wish to answer. What are the features of a line on a velocity time graph for an object that has a constant velocity motion? And how would such a velocity time graph distinguish between an object with positive velocity and an object with negative velocity? And how would it distinguish between a fast moving object and a slow moving object? Let's get started. Now, velocity is a vector, and as such, it has a magnitude or numerical value, and it has a direction. And when we're talking to calculators and to graphs about direction, we often use a plus or a minus sign, where plus would mean to the right or east, and the negative sign would mean to the left or west or down, or something of that nature. So when we plot a velocity time graph, we will often show on the graph positive regions and negative regions, and then there's a time axis which is representing the v equals zero location on the graph. Now we could have lines in any of these regions, like lines in the positive regions for objects with a positive velocity, and then lines in the negative regions for objects with a negative velocity. We can often show numbers on these graphs, and these numbers would represent actual velocity values, like a velocity of positive 2 meters per second, or a velocity of negative 2 or negative 4 meters per second. So when we talk about velocity time graphs, we talk about where the line's located and whether the line is diagonal or horizontal, and that's what's coming up in the next few slides. Let's contrast the look of the graph for an object that has a constant velocity with that of a changing velocity. To begin, let's just think about what constant velocity means. It means that the velocity of the object isn't changing. So when we begin to plot velocity as a function of time, what we would notice is that the velocity value doesn't change. And so we would have the general rule that constant velocity motions are represented on velocity time graphs by lines that are horizontal, like line number 1 and line number 3 in this graph. And changing velocities are represented by lines that aren't horizontal. For instance, they could be diagonal, like lines number 2 and line number 4. Now let's talk about what velocity time graphs would look like for positive velocities and for negative velocities. So naturally, positive velocities are displayed in the positive regions of the graph, and negative velocities are displayed in the negative regions of the graph. Here you see four lines, and what you notice is that two of the lines are up in the positive region, and those are for objects moving with positive velocity. The other two lines are in the negative region of the graph, and those are for objects moving with negative velocity. Now positive and negative simply represent some information information about a direction. And so at some point we have to have a reference frame. A reference frame that states something like to the east is positive and to the west is negative. Or maybe to the right is positive and to the left is negative. Or maybe upward is positive and downwards is negative. So in speaking numerically about velocity, we often use a plus or a minus sign as an indicator of the direction. Now let's contrast the look of a velocity time graph for a slow object compared to a fast object. When we talk about a slow object, we mean an object that has a small velocity. And of course, a fast object is an object with a large velocity. So if we begin to plot velocity as a function of time, a slow moving object would be plotted at a very low velocity value. Well, about as low as you can go is a zero velocity, so it would be closer to the zero mark on the graph. And of course, fast would be further from the zero mark, such as these two lines that you see here. Of course, as slow as you could go would be zero meters per second. That's an object that is at rest, and we see that line right there on the time axis. But all of these objects are moving in the positive direction, and that's why the line's above the zero above the time axis. But if it's moving in the negative direction, then we would observe the lines to be below the time axis. Like here is slow while moving in the negative direction, and here is fast while moving in the negative direction. So what can we say then? We can say the general rule is that the closer that the line is to the zero mark on the on the velocity axis, that it that is closer to the time axis, the slower the object is. Whether it is above the time axis or below it, the closer it is, the slower the object. And the farther it is from the zero mark, the faster the object. Now this is probably one of the most difficult things you could do. Taking a position time graph 
in translating or transposing it into the corresponding velocity time graph. You have to keep the rules straight for position time and velocity time graphs. So when we see a straight diagonal line like we do on the left for a position time graph, that tells us an object's moving with a constant velocity. The fact that it's sloped positively on that position graph means that it has a positive velocity. So we would say for the graph on the left, we wouldn't have to graph a velocity time graph for a constant velocity moving in the positive direction. That means a horizontal line located above the time axis. Now if we look at the middle graph, that's a graph of a position time graph that is sloped negatively. So the object has a negative velocity and the fact that the line is a straight diagonal means that it has a constant negative velocity. So now I'm going to draw a horizontal line on the velocity time graph for a constant velocity, but I'm going to place it in the negative region of the graph like that. Now if we look at the final position time graph on the far right, that's a horizontal line, a line that has a slope of zero. So the velocity of this object is zero. So when I go to plot the velocity time graph, I'm going to plot a horizontal line right at v equals zero. So it looks like this. So here's a summary of the three types of things that we've talked about. We've contrasted constant velocity with changing velocity. And on a velocity time graph, constant velocity is represented by a horizontal line, a changing velocity by a diagonal line. We've also contrasted positive velocity with negative velocity. And on a velocity time graph, a pos positive velocity is a line plotted in the positive region above the time axis. And a negative velocity is plotted below the time axis. And finally, we've talked about fast moving objects versus slow moving objects. Fast moving objects have a larger positive or negative negative velocity and as such are plotted further from the time axis, further from the v equals zero mark, and slow moving objects are plotted closer to the time axis or closer to the v equals zero mark. There you have the three objectives that we set out to accomplish in this video. Well, as you can see, we've accomplished our objectives. We wanted to learn what does a constant velocity motion look like on a velocity time graph. And we wanted to learn how is positive velocity distinguished from negative velocity. And finally, we wish to learn how is a fast moving object distinguished from a slow moving object. So we've accomplished our goals. And it's at this time in the video that I always like to give you an action plan, a way to help you out with a series of next steps to solidify your learning. But before I help you out, I was wondering if I could just take a few moments to ask you to help us out. First of all, if you like the video, can you hit the like button down below? And if you like the video, maybe you'd like to subscribe to our channel. By doing so, you can get notifications when new videos come out. And finally, if you have a question or a comment, leave it down below, below the description section of this video. Now for the action plan, a way to help you out. The first thing I'd like to suggest is a trip off to our website, go to the Physics Interactive section, go to the Kinematics chapter, and try the graphs and ramps. It's a great practice. It's a fun little practice. I recommend it. Second, there's a concept builders on our website. And in that section, if you go to the Kinematics area, you'll see something called Velocity Time Graphs. There's three difficulty levels, and right now, a great way to follow up this video is to try the apprentice difficulty level, which focuses on constant velocity motions. Then if you're a Minds on Physics user, why don't you try our app number one? On it, you'll find three different modules, and the second module is called Kinematic Graphing. There's a series of missions in that module, a collection of questions that are rather rigorous in nature with instant and immediate feedback and built-in help. Why don't you try missions KG5? through KG7, a great follow-up to this video. And finally, if you're just in need of a reference, we have a tutorial on our website. If you go to Lesson 4 of Chapter 1 on Kinematics, you'll it's all about velocity time graph. That video is a great reference and might be a nice way to follow up to this video. Whatever you do, good luck to you.